if you are struggling with problems with your teeth, if you're having tooth pain, if your gums are bleeding, or if you just want to have the healthiest mouth possible, you've clicked on the right video. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Stern, and welcome to my channel, Take Control of Your Health. And today I am thrilled and honored to have as a guest, Dr. Lou Travato, who is a holistic dentist. And I've been wanting to um, approach this subject on my channel for a long time. And I am, I am so happy that you're taking the time out today to educate us about the link between your mouth health and the rest of your body health. So Dr. Lou, would you like to uh, tell us a, just a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, Corey. It's a pleasure and an honor. Uh, I've been uh, I've been in dentistry for almost 40 years now, believe it or not. Um, probably the first 20 years, I was a traditional dentist and uh, did a lot of things that my colleagues are still doing today. Uh, unfortunately, in my mid 40s, uh, I found out I was mercury toxic from uh, drilling mercury fillings out for 25 years, and uh, it was pretty tough. We had um, you know we had some significant detoxification to do, and I got through it, and I got on the other side. And unfortunately, I couldn't come back and continue to do what I did. And so we learned how to uh, do what we refer to as safe amalgam removals, uh, mercury removals. And um, people started to talk about it. And I used to get uh, phone calls from wellness centers asking me what we were doing. And uh, one thing led to another. And we became a very busy, busy practice. And, um, you know, I tell... Uh, you know, everybody and my colleagues in particular that, uh, you know, what we did was to try to protect me, but inevitability, we, we protect our patients, we protect my staff, which is hugely important. And we protect the people in the waiting room, believe it or not, because mercury is so insidious in dental offices, you have to be very careful about that. So that's kind of the background of how I got into this. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, from that perspective, I understand mercury uh, intimately, and uh, you know I try to share that with as many people as I can. So that's where it's all about. Yep, yep. I had a similar situation, and I, I once I got my mercury removed safely from my mouth, it was a game changer for me. I remember as a kid, I was in the dentist a lot. I had a lot of cavities, and and he, the dentist, had some balls of mercury in the waiting room for kids to play with. So amazing, and then how. What do we know about that? Yep. Yep. You know, yep. The unfortunate part about it is the ADA and the powers that be still promote it. And, uh, you know, not many dentists today are still providing mercury uh, as a service. But, you know, I tell my patients all the time and my colleagues that mercury safe and mercury free are completely different things because mercury, mercury free means you don't do mercury fillings, but you take them out unsafely. Mm -hmm. which for a patient is a huge burden because when they're in their mouth, in actuality, you're getting micro dosed every day. And right. when you take them out unsafely, you get macro dosed and it's a, it's a problem. And there are some people, unfortunately, and you probably run across this every day in your practice that are on the edge. I mean, they are very fragile individuals and you do something like that to one of those people and they fall off the deep end. And I've seen it, I've seen it, you know, in my practice and, you know, we have to be very careful with those, I call them glass dolls, you know, where you just touch them and they fall apart. So those people have to be treated very differently than probably 80% of the population. So um, it's important to understand the, the significance of mercury and how it can be a very, very bad player in anybody's health or trying to get healthy, put it that way. Yeah, my mom, unfortunately, was one of those. Uh, I trace back her um, unsafe mercury amalgam removals to her developing a rare form of Parkinson's, which was absolutely horrible. So yeah, the neurologic yeah. issues are, are mind boggling yeah. and nobody's putting it back to this. Nobody's making that connection. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the powers that be are not talking about it. So well, that's yeah. why we're here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't even want to comment on what the powers that be might be thinking about what uh, the whole population being sure. poisoned by mercury. Sure. Um, not to mention that it's in in some inoculations as well, which get injected sure. directly. Yeah, into the your aerosol blood. was a ma major issue. Right. So before we went on, you started to talk to me about the dental component of health. Yeah. And that's a topic that a lot of people don't give a lot of thought to, right? So I was telling you earlier, 
a lot of my patients or people that I talk to, they only think about their teeth when something goes wrong, when they have a toothache or if their gums are bleeding or they have a sore in their mouth. And then the only thing they think to do about it is to go to a dentist and either get a cavity filled or, or get a root canal or get a, um, an extraction or uh, something like that. But there's so much more to the connection between your teeth, your gums, and your overall health. So let's let's talk about that. Sure. Well, when new patients come into my practice, uh, you know, we have a uh, onboard nutritionist who happens to be my son, and he has a discussion for at least a half hour to maybe an hour prior to me, you know, entering the room, just so that the patients understand the nutritional component and how profound it is for keeping their teeth and, and their body healthy in general. But, you know, my, my point to my discussion with every new patient is that I call it a triad of care. And the, the, the one side of the triad is nutrition and understanding sugar, understanding, uh, you know, even just lifestyle, sleep, um, you know, exercise, supplementation, you know, just being a healthy human being is going to have a healthy mouth and a healthy body. The second part of the triad is going to be good professional care. And I used to just say showing up periodically, not coming in every five years because too many bad things can happen over that amount of time. But I added to that time factor going to the right dentist. And that's huge because, you know, as many people are aware, um, you know, there, there are a lot of aggressive dentists out there who want to drill everything. And if I had any, uh, I guess, words of wisdom to patients, the less dentistry you have, the better. Because anytime a dentist picks up a drill and touches your teeth, there's going to be some damage that is, it's not repairable. You can't fix that. Once you cut a tooth, you can't uncut it. Now they can be careful and they can be, they can be uh, as gentle as possible with it, but it's still irreparable. And that's, that's kind of the direction we want to go. Um, you know, and, and the foundational part of this this triad is going to be home care, you know, because that's what you do every day as a patient, you know, and you had mentioned to me that you, you have a great toothbrush that you like, and I think that's certainly something you should share. But, um, you know, we resurrected an old technique that was back in, back in the seventies, really, it was called the Kai's technique. Dr. Paul Kai's developed this and it was base, basically a mixture of baking soda and peroxide and water. And what you're doing with the baking soda is you're creating a very alkaline environment. And with the peroxide, you're creating an oxygenated environment. And those two parameters create a terrain in your mouth. You know, everybody talks about gut terrains, but there's an oral terrain as well. And if you can create an alkaline oxygenated terrain in your mouth with something as simple as baking soda and peroxide, my goodness, you know, you've done yourself a service. And we see bleeding gums stop. We see decay stop. We see mouth sores stop just with a simple home care technique. And that plays into, you know, the whole nutritional part of it, because if you're, you know, I joke about it, it's not a joke, but there are people out there who truly believe that they can drink Diet Coke and eat McDonald's and it's okay. And it's not okay from a number of perspectives, especially from the teeth. So that's kind of our, our introduction to our dental practice. And then obviously when we get to the point of, you know, making suggestions, I tell everyone there's three elephants in the room for every patient that comes in. Number one is mercury. Number one across the board is mercury. So we always want to, we always want to address the mercury fillings that are left in their mouth. The second thing is going to be root canals, you know, because this can be a discussion for the next hour and a half about root canals. But, you know, in my world, I think about 80% of the root canals that I see in general are poorly done and failing. And, you know, if you're in a situation where you're offered a root canal and there was a true informed consent, Dr. Huggins wrote a great book called Uninformed Consent, but uh, if there was a true informed consent and the dentist told you, you had an 80% chance of losing this tooth someday, what do you want to do about it? Most normal, most intelligent human beings would say, well, why would I would spend all this time, money and aggravation on a root canal and an eventual crown? Let's just take it out and put a zirconia implant and it's going to be healthier. It's going to be more longevity involved and, and it's a much safer way to go. You know, and um, the last thing is going to be gum problems and periodontal disease, you know, and this is rampant in the United States and people don't, again, you know, my, my discussion, I try to keep it as simple as possible with people, but if you brush your teeth and see blood in the sink, 
you've just created a bacteremia. You just have to understand that you've created a situation where all the bugs in your mouth, good or bad, are now in your bloodstream. And it goes to your weak point. And your weak point's a heart valve that's called a heart attack. And if it's your brain, it's called a stroke. What's interesting is the orthopedic surgeons are about the only ones in medicine to really understand this because they'll send me a piece of paper prior to a knee or a hip replacement that says there's no dental infections in this patient's mouth. And people will get mad at me. They'll come in on a Wednesday and say, hey, I'm getting my hip replaced on Friday. I'm like, no, you're not. Not with that mouth, you're not. Because I understand and the orthopedic surgeons understand intimately that they put that new, new knee and that's the weak point now. That's the weak point of the body these bugs are going right there and you're going to lose that knee or that hip. So having stable, solid gum tissues is critical to overall systemic health. And that's kind of how we started. So I'll leave it to you with that. If you want to make any comments about that. Well, let me ask you about the baking soda peroxide sure. treatment. Is that a rinse or you're having people brush with it? Oh yeah, they brush with it. It's not a rinse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. people say, what about toothpaste? Well, that is your toothpaste. Right. You know, you want to make it a little fancier. You can put cinnamon in there or peppermint oil or, you know, anything you want really, you know, but um, you have to be smart about it. You're not going to put saccharin or something silly like that in there, but right. you know, xylitol is very <laughs> antibacterial. You can make it sweet. You can make it minty, um, anything you want, but the basic nature of it is baking soda and peroxide. And again, I joke about it, but a box of arm and hammer will last you three lifetimes. You'll never go through it doing this, you know? So it's not expensive and it's right. certainly simple to do. Now we added a little tweak to this and this might be something that your, uh, you know, your audience might be interested in. Um, there's, a, there's a product out there called a soft pick and it's a very small little brush. And what I suggest people do is pick up the baking soda with this little brush and work it specifically between all your teeth. And then the question obviously becomes, well, what about floss? And I certainly don't have any problems with flossing, but I'll be blunt. I, 30, 40 years in dentistry, I've never met anybody who knows how to floss correctly. They never do it right. And if you do it poorly, sometimes you do more damage than good. Again, if you cut yourself and you create a bleeding environment, that's not healthy. That's not going to be okay. With these little soft brushes, you can remove the food, but do it gently but you, you can also place the baking soda and peroxide right where all the problems are. You know, if you think about your teeth, you don't get cavities on the front surfaces because that's where you clean. You get cavities on the in-between surfaces where you don't floss correctly. And this kind of helps eliminate that problem. Uh, my son wrote his dissertation for his PhD on what we call remineralization techniques and how you can take a very small cavity and remineralize it with this technique. And, you know, there are other adjuncts in our practice, uh, there's a product called MI paste. MI paste is calcium and phosphate, which is what your teeth are made of. Uh, and when you have these small beginning cavities, if you use the baking soda with the calcium phosphate paste, you can actually see these remineralize. They get better and it's fascinating. So again, if you're in an aggressive dental office and they see these small cavities, their first reaction is, oh, we have to fill these. In our practice, well, let's see if we can remineralize them. Now, if we can't, and the next time we see you, they're worse, well, maybe at that point we have to intervene. But if we don't have to intervene with a drill, it's going to be so much more beneficial for long term for the patient. So that's how we attack those kind of small little early cavities that many dentists would fill. That's fantastic. I mean, I knew I know that teeth can be remineralized, and I actually <laughs> do it to some degree myself with with supplements, which um, toward the end of the video, I'll let you guys know what, sure. what supplements I use uh, to help people with any mm -hmm. kind of tooth issues. Mm -hmm. But um, let's talk about nutrition and what is the number one cause of, of cavities? Well, it's poor nutrition, poor home care, you know, and again, you know, I don't want to say lack of professional care, but you know, if people are coming in periodically enough, and for some people, six months is perfectly fine. For other people, it's not. The other people, it's four months, three months, because they either build too much tartar, which unfortunately, you know, again, using layman's terms, when we talk about tartar and calculus, I call it a bacteria motel. That's all that is. You know, it's a ball of bacteria that sit on your teeth and create an acidic environment, which again, why the the, the pH is, is so important and, and checking that sometimes you can do that with pH paper, but that acidic environment with that tartar and calculus on your teeth creates breakdown of the enamel and decay. So if you get the tartar removed in a timely fashion, you keep the acidity under control with the baking soda, 
you probably have a pretty good shot at keeping your teeth for a long, long time, you know, and it's not, it's not hard to do. The prevention of an acidic mouth would be mm -hmm. an alkaline based diet. So that Absolutely. would be lots of vegetables, avoiding junk yeah. food, and especially yeah. avoiding sugar. Sugar. Yeah, sugar. absolutely. Which sugar is sugar and refined carbs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what feeds the bacteria to create the acid, the acidic uh, environment. So, um, you know, anything that you can do to make your body alkaline is going to be beneficial. And you know, I mean, Otto Warburg won a Nobel Prize for this in 1939. So, I mean, this is not new information. You right. know, like, it's just right. one of those things that um, you know nobody wants to talk about this because it's so much easier for dentists to just drill, you know, and not fix. You know, so right, and that's what you're taught in school. So, sure. absolutely, um, the yeah. paradigm. Yeah, yeah. It's a paradigm. So uh, people get confused when we talk about alkalinity. They just want to they want to create alkalinity by drinking the baking soda. But that's the, 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 it has to start with the right diet. It has to start with eating nutrient dense foods, um, particularly high in leafy green vegetables because they are very alkaline and taking good quality nutritional supplements helps as well. And just avoiding junk food, fast food and sugary food. So, it makes so much sense when you say it out loud, but people don't get it. You know, it's, it's I know. But you know, it really just sounds like that's a that's a that's a prescription for a great lifestyle. Exactly. But, you know, it's it's hard to do for some people. Well, know. because your you know your entire body, and I say this on many of my videos, your entire body is made out of cells, and your cells are constantly dying and you're growing new cells. And where does your body get the material? It needs to grow the new cells. And that is from the food you eat. So if you eat crap, you're growing crappy cells and then your body doesn't work well. And teeth are no exception to this. So people don't think of their teeth in terms of nutrition. And you already said your teeth are made out of calcium and phosphate. I have um, some phosphorus deficient patients who have brown teeth. That's yeah. what happens when you're phosphorus deficient. So you actually will put, um, put them on a phosphorus supplement and, and get some improvement. I've seen that happen. I've seen kids born with these brown teeth because they were either their mom was phosphorus deficient while they were pregnant. Or they were over fluoridated. Oh, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so good segue good segue into that topic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, fluoride. Wow. Um, you know, in, in my dental world, uh, the allopathic dental world, this is a staple. I mean, every patient that comes in gets a fluoride treatment. Kids are taking fluoride tablets. Moms are taking fluoride tablets. Uh, it's in our water. It's in our juice. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. And, um, you know, I have some very, um, very, very, uh, find mentors and you know we hear a lot of the uh, research that's going on right now and um, you know fluoride there's two major issues in my mind with fluoride systemically um, <clears throat> topically it's a different issue but again you know we use it topically for things like we just talked about remineralization but why not use what the teeth are made of, not some type of foreign toxic substance? What's interesting about fluoride, I don't want to get off the subject here because I was going in a direction, but if you pick up any normal tube of toothpaste, you pick up Crest or Colgate or Aquafresh, turn it over. People won't believe me, but turn it over. There's a warning sign. It says this swallow called poison control. And mm -hmm. that's because there's fluoride in there. And that's the only reason. So I say to patient, patients, use a healthy toothpaste. And they look at me and what's that mean? I said, something you don't have to call poison control every time you brush your teeth, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of the nature of fluoride. We know it's a toxin, but what it does specifically is it bumps off the iodine molecule on your thyroid, which is T3, T4, if you're getting tests. So fluoride in, in, the, in the scheme of the periodic table is above iodine. So it's a bully and it knocks it off. Now we have this epidemic of hypothyroidism because of all the fluoride we're taking. Now, the newest one that I just heard was it calcifies your pineal gland. And this is huge because now you're talking about disruptions in your circadian rhythm. You're talking about no melatonin and no sleep. And if you can't sleep, you can't heal. Uh, that's, that's just end of story. So, yeah. you know, why would you take something that can destroy your metabolism and destroy your sleep cycles 
it makes no sense. And why it's in our water is, you know, a political, um, you know, rabbit hole that, you know, we don't need to discuss now. But I think if any normal human being with a rational thought in their brain would understand fluoride, um, they would they would stay as far away from it as possible. So that's my take on fluoride. So um, <clears throat> it's a hard sell, though, in dentistry, I have to tell you, because of the paradigms. Uh, when I first came back with this information and tried to share it with my hygienists, I thought I was going to have a revolt. I mean, they were like, what do you mean we can't use fluoride? Because it's so ingrained in dentistry right now. Right. It got to the point, and this is kind of a funny story. Um, I came in one Saturday afternoon, and I just took all the fluoride out of the practice and threw it away. And they came in on Monday and it wasn't there. So now they had no choice, you know, but I could still, you know, in the early stages of this, we're talking 20, 25 years ago, when I came back with this information, um, you know, they were very hesitant, they were very reluctant because that's what they were taught. And I get it, you know, but now they know better. You know, now we've, we've educated all, all our staff and they're well on board with this. Now it's a matter of educating the patients. And that's, that's the next step. So you're taught that fluoride strengthens teeth. The, the um, nature of it is um, the fluoride will replace the calcium molecule and create, and again, I want to get too technical, but it creates fluoroappetite, not calcium appetite or hydroxyappetite. Uh, and it's a harder molecule. Right. And the thought is hard is better. Now, you can equate this very simply to bisphosphonates because bisphosphonates make a harder bone. The problem is it's brittle bone. So why are we having this epidemic of broken hips with people in their, you know, instead of having elastic bones, they have fragile bones. We have fragile teeth and, you know, it, it creates a hard shell, but that hard shell is, is fragile and it breaks and we have fracture and we have decay and all the things that happen with that. So there's no, there's no studies realistically that show it truly does not cause, or, you know, it helps you not get decay, no studies whatsoever. Right. So the propaganda and the, and the machine that created this whole fluoride deception, if you will, which is the name of a really good book, if you want to read it, it's called the mm -hmm. fluoride deception. Um, you know, it, it really just, um, <laughs> and I, I, I was just going to go, it kind of equates a lot to what we're hearing right now about viruses. But the point is that I don't want to go down that road. But, um, you know, it's not necessary. There are other things that are safer, healthier. And, you know, uh, you have supplements, I have supplements, it, it's, you know, my, my supplements are mostly interoral topical supplements, your are intraoral or systemic supplements, but, but they all work. They all work. That's the mm -hmm. key. If you mm -hmm. don't need poison. So, as, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> full agreement with you. And this would be a, a great moment for me to mention my uh, partner called uh, Hats Hardcore Awakened Truth Seekers because go. they are also um, giving us information about things like this, the truth about fluoride. So they are the most informative truth movement out there. And I'd love for you to join them, this wonderful organization to gain valuable in information and be a part of a real community. I'll put the links on my, on my uh, description of the video and they have a website where you can order cool stuff. I'm wearing one of their shirts right now. I'm gonna stand up so you can see it. It says hats on it and they have, they have lovely shirts, t-shirts and sweatshirts and um, tank tops. They have some household stuff, uh, beach towels, and um, they have a, a cool organic tote bag. They have a coffee mug and water, um, uh, stainless steel water uh, mug, uh, thermos. So they have all kinds of nice stuff and, and supporting them helps to support getting truthful information out there. So, so um, Dr. Liu, let's um, just also talk a little bit about uh, one of my mentors, which is uh, Dr. Royal Lee, or actually, well, there's two of them, Dr. Weston A. Price and Dr. Royal Lee, who were both dentists in the 30s and 40s, and they both discovered uh, at the same time, although separately, they didn't know each other, that um, people's, the general populations was seeing, they were seeing changes in, in the teeth and the, and the bone structure of the jaw and the palate, right? Mm -hmm. And these two guys both figured out independently in different ways that it was being caused by nutritional deficiency because food 
really started becoming processed around the turn of the century, got worse in the 20s with the invention of the refrigerator. Um, so the company that I mostly use for my supplements was started by Dr. Royal Lee, and that's called Standard Process. I've talked about them a lot. Um, what you mentioned some other uh, guys, dentists from back then who were instrumental in, in us figuring out what's really going on in there. Well, Dr. Price, um, you know, it, it's fascinating to me that they were both dentists, which is uh, kind of an interesting little side. But um, Dr. Price, um, you know, he wrote the, uh, his nutritional uh, book, uh, Nutrition and Degeneration, I think it was called, um, you know, after he traveled the world yes. and visited indigenous societies, you know, and found that these, you know, Aborigines and Eskimos and, you um, Indians um, all over the planet, which when you think about it in 1923 was a feat. I mean, you couldn't just get on a plane and fly there. I mean, you were on a boat for three months and I mean, right. it was a, it was a trip. Right. Um, but he found that these indigenous societies on their, you know, living off the land had no cardiovascular disease and no diabetes, but over and above that, they had no orthodontic problems. They had no periodontal disease. They had no decay. And he has pictures in his book of these broad smiles, these beautiful, beautiful. arches. Mm -hmm. And it, it just fascinates me. And then, you know, when you look at uh, some of the Price Pottinger work with uh, the cats, Dr. Mm -hmm. Pottinger's work with the cats, mm -hmm. how in two generations of, of introducing, you know, our white flour and sugar and all the, you know, the modern poisons, Garbage. if you will, mm -hmm. um, you know, all that goes away. Now the disease processes come in and as, as far as a dental component, we get narrow arches, we get decay, we get periodontal disease. Um, and, and it's really just fascinating stuff. Um, Dr. Price also did uh, a lot of work with root canals, getting back to that topic. Um, he did a study uh, where he took pieces of root canals and embedded them under the skin of rabbits. And what he found is the rabbits within a couple of days to a couple of weeks would develop the same symptoms of the patient who had that root canal, whether it be heart disease or diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis. And he'd take the, take the root canal out from under the skin of the rabbit and the rabbit got better. And I mean, when people ask me about root canals and I have my discussion about, you know, the nature of them, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes hear things like, is this new information? I've never heard this before. And, and I, you have to laugh because Dr. Price wrote about this in 1929. So we're talking almost a hundred years ago. Yep. I tell them it's not new information. It's just suppressed information, but this stuff is out there. And getting back to your point about the other doctors, the interesting story is when Dr. Price passed away, his family had all of his research and all of his studies and they needed somewhere to go with it. And there was one gentleman back in the 60s who was probably the father of the anti-mercury um, groups that we have now in dentistry. And his name was Hal Huggins. Dr. Huggins was contacted by Dice, Dr. Price's family. And they wanted to give him all this information because they trusted him to do the right thing with it and put it out there to the universe. And they showed up one day with just boatload of, of books and papers and everything. And Dr. Huggins got a hold of this stuff and started talking about it, started writing about it. Uh, he wrote many, many books. Um, you know, the one that I think is kind of a, a humorous title, it's called It's All in Your Head. And because people were having all these, you know, psychotic depressions, uh, anxiety, they'd go to doctors and they'd put them on Prozac and tell them they were crazy. It was all in your head. And he would joke, it is in your head. It's your mercury, it's your root canals, it's your gum disease problems. Well, Dr. Huggins, um, you know, he took all his information and passed it on to uh, a gentleman who um, is a good mentor of mine. His name is Thomas Levy. Dr. Levy is a medical doctor. Uh, and he wrote several books with Dr. Huggins, but he wrote, I think, the um, quintessential book, realistically, on root canals. It's called The Hidden Epidemic, and it was written two years ago, and uh, he brings all this information into the 21st century. So if anybody comes into my practice questioning whether or not they should do something about a root canal, my knee-jerk reaction is read Dr. Levy's book. The term hidden epidemic is that people are walking around with hidden infections because all of these root canals do not hurt. 
I tell people pain is a great motivator. Pain is your body telling you something's wrong. And that brings people in, which is a good thing. But many people walk around every day with hidden root canal infections and don't know they're there. They're draining into their sinus, they're draining into their lymphatic system, they're draining into their bloodstream, and they're getting systemic and they're causing systemic manifestations. And that's just on a physical plane. Now, I don't know how far you want to go with this thing, but there's an energetic disturbance as well. And, you know, understanding autonomic response testing like you do, um, you know, meridian flow and the chi of our body is important. And what's been proven by 5,000 years of Chinese medicine is that every tooth in your body is the spark plug of certain meridians. And when people come in with these root canals, that meridian is stopped. And there, there are certain meridians that scare the living daylights out of me. And the first one would, that jumps out is stomach meridian. Stomach meridian involves your upper molars and your lower premolars. And for women especially, they have to understand this. And I talk to them every day. When people come into my practice, you know, I tell them, my job is to give you information. Your job is to figure out what you want to do about it. Because I'm not going to tell you what to do. You have to figure this out on your own. Read the book. Go do your research. But if you've been diagnosed with a breast issue and you have a stomach meridian root canal, there are research papers and books written about that correlation. Dr. Levy talks long and hard about this, but you know, that's a scary thing to me. And even if you don't have a diagnosis or you don't have a breast issue, my goal is you're going to remember the crazy dentist who told you about this thing 20 years from now when something happens, and you'll get that tooth out because it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to get better. It's not going to relieve itself without that, that tooth being removed. And this is powerful information as far as I'm concerned. And, and people need to have this because normal dentistry will not talk about this. They don't even understand this. Right. Um, I learned about acupuncture years after I got out of dental school, but it's, a, it's, a, it's profoundly a, you know, part of what we do on an everyday basis. I didn't know about the stomach meridian root canal breast thing either. I just took notes. Um, I'm going to have to learn exactly where the stomach meridian root well, canal can, connection you can, is. And you can Google tooth meridian chart. I will. I actually, I, I think I have one in my office and I haven't been paying enough attention yeah. to it, but yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And I will put all of the books that Dr. Yeah. Lou mentioned, I'll put them in, in the uh, description so you guys can, um, find them and remember them. He also mentioned Pottinger cats. That was a guy yeah. who did some studies with cats and nutrition and wrote a fantastic, wrote, there's a, um, a book called, I think it's called the Pottinger cats or mm -hmm. yeah. And um, that, that kind of demonstrates what we're dealing with in our society right now, how um, generation after generation of eating um, a, a poison food uh, the population is getting sicker and sicker. That's what Dr. Sure. Pottinger found with his cats. I just want, I wanted it while you're talking, I thought of two quick stories to sure. tell um, how teeth can affect health. Um, I, I was telling you before we came on about a patient of mine who had unresolving insomnia and constipation. And no matter what I did with him, no matter what I tried, all of my usual stuff that works was not working. And I finally, after it took me months, I finally traced it to an infection in his tooth. And it was what we call a hidden infection mm -hmm. because it was not symptomatic until it was. It and was that's how epidemic. I found it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So one day he comes in complaining of tooth pain and boom, I'm like, that's, that's the thing that we've been missing. And just out of curiosity, do you remember what tooth it was? I'd love to know what meridian it was. Yeah, that would be interesting, right? I want to. It could have been large intestine meridian. I want to say that it was. It was definitely in a, a, one of the back teeth. Lower molars or large intestine meridian. Yeah, yeah that, I that's, think that's. I think it was the lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He you know, ended it, up getting it pulled. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. That's the best yeah. thing you can do. Yeah. You know, uh, people always kind of uh, are taken aback by the, the the reaction, or not the reaction, but the suggestion that removing the tooth is the healthiest thing you can do. And there's reasons for that, obviously, because you don't wanna walk around without a tooth or you, your chewing capacity is limited. But with the advent of zirconia implants, and you know that's not a, a subject for today, but you have a biocompatible option now because zirconia is a, is a ceramic. And putting ceramics in, unlike titanium, which is a metal, metal uh, right. you can have 
very good biocompatible results and have a tooth that's healthier and stronger in the long run anyway. Yes. But um, yeah, I, large I, intestine I, I, meridian is, is, um, is, uh, is a problem. It's really interesting because, um, you know, I tell patients when you look at this meridian chart, um, sometimes two plus two equals four. You know, here I'm having gastrointestinal problems and I have a, a large intestine meridian issue, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes two plus two equals a thousand. Right. And that's where you have to be careful. And I, if you want to hear another anecdote about this, I, I had a patient one time and usually when they lose a tooth, I'll see them in six months and I'll have a question like, did you notice any changes? You know, did, did you feel any different? And the the knee jerk reaction is, yeah, I had a little more energy or yeah, I was sleeping better, just kind of anecdotal stuff that you couldn't put your finger on. Well, this gentleman was very specific and he came in and he said, you know, doc, I used to be a runner and I had arthritis in my big toes so bad that I couldn't run anymore. As a matter of fact, that's hard for me to walk. And I had that tooth removed and my toe got better. Wow. And <laughs> I I'm laugh available. because I know the, I know these meridians, like the back of my hand, it happened to have been tooth number 19, which was lower left. And I went in and I have a chart where you can push on the tooth and it tells you the meridian and it tells you all, everything about it. And there's a section on it that says joints, you know, it'll go through the organ systems and the glands and then the joints. And right at the joints, it said shoulder, elbow, big toe. And I looked at him and we both kind of laughed about it, but you try to explain that to any allopathic doctor or dentist, and they're going to tell you you're out of your mind, that that tooth had nothing to do with that big toe. Now that was one person and one anecdote. It's not a, you know, it's not a research and it's not a double blind placebo study, but that's what I see. And I'm sure that's what you see when you work with people in those, you know, those energetic realms. And um, it's important that people understand that the physicality of it is important because the, the infections of the world and the root canals of the world are on a physical plane. But when you move up to that energetic plane, there's a lot of other things that happen as well as the mental and the spiritual and everything else. But the point is that you've got to work with all of that in order to get somebody completely healthy. And if you're just focusing on the physical, you may get better, but you might not. Missing something. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm happy to report that I actually have quite a number of allopathic dentists coming in to see me as patients. Interesting. So I'm able to actually help mm -hmm. them to mm -hmm. make this connection and maybe broaden their horizons a little bit. The I other, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, what I'd like to point out about that is, you know, mm -hmm. most allopathic doctors and dentists don't get into this world that I'm in unless they have some problem, you know, and if they get sick, that's the most profound thing right. like me, you right. know, right. but you can have an autistic child and you're finding no, no help, or you can have a wife that gets breast cancer and you find no help from the allopathic world and you have to explore. And once you know, you can't unknow. And That's now right. you're in this world and I joke about it, but it's a rabbit hole and doors mm -hmm. close behind you and you just have to keep going forward because you can't go back. You, you just can't do it as a, as a human, you can't go backwards. That's right. You know, so. That's right. I say that all the time. Once you know, once you see, you can't yeah, unsee it. Right. Yeah. And there's many people who aren't ready for that though. You know, and that's the problem, you know, that if they're not ready to hear it. Well, then, that, that's the point of this channel is absolutely. to help start introducing this type of information to people who may be on the verge of getting ready to hear it. And that's, that's, that's why I'm doing this and, and not getting paid for it. I'll add. It's a great service. <laughs> um, I just, I'm going to tell a quick story about my own uh, two, mm -hmm my own tooth story and then i'm going to uh, introduce my favorite supplement that i use for teeth sure. so i had uh um something called uh, i think it was called a mees line of um a uh vertical fracture in okay. my tooth and uh, my dentist told me we'll just keep a watch on it and mm -hmm. then one day i started to have pain there and he said oh okay i thought that might happen well let's um let's put some filling in it to stabilize it. So he did that, but I was still having pain. Mm -hmm. So the next thing he did, cause I didn't know better, this was years ago. He sent me to an endodontist right. and um, I got a root canal on that tooth. And um, I have complicated roots. My root, I have extra roots, they're curved. So that's why he, he sent me to an endodontist. Yeah. So I get a root canal, still have pain. So then my dentist says to me, okay, so the only other option is to have it extracted. So he sends me to a surgeon. I get the tooth removed. Guess what? Still had pain. Mm -hmm. 
even mm -hmm. though there was no tooth there. So fast forward, I'm in chiropractic school and I learn about trigger points in the jaw muscle that can refer pain and appear to be a toothache. And lo and behold, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And this is years later. So I went back to my dentist and I said to him, hey, doc, did you learn anything about jaw trigger points in dental school? And he was like, oh, yeah, but I never, ever, ever think about that as a possible source of pain in sure. the mouth. Yep. I'm like, OK, well, maybe you will now because I had a tooth removed for no reason. But anyway, that was my story. And um, so I, I still have occasional trigger points there and still feel pain in the area that I don't have a tooth anymore. So just um, to make a comment about that, yeah. you know, dentists, unfortunately, get very myopic. You know, we we work for two years on what we call a deniform, which is a little head that has a mouth on it and fake teeth in there. And you get so focused on looking at these teeth that you don't back up and look at the and actually realize there's a person attached to these teeth. And um, I got a fellowship years ago in the Academy of Craniofacial Pain, and we learned all about trigger points and TMJ and, you know, all kinds of cervical issues and things that you know, are not necessarily in a normal dentist realm. And I joke about it. I, I When I got out of dental school, I didn't know how to spell TMJ, let alone treat it. So it was one of those situations that this was a whole two-year curriculum to get a fellowship. And we were able to use procaine. We were able to use uh, acupuncture. We were able to use uh, TENS. We were able to use a lot of different techniques to focus on these trigger points. And you would see neuralgic relief, you know, and... Um, you know, I mean, something as simple as a sinus infection can cause tooth pain mm -hmm. because it's a neuralgia. You oh, know, the absolutely. nerve that runs to the teeth runs through the sinus. You yes. have an infected sinus, you have pain in your teeth. Yeah. I yeah. can't tell you how many root canals I've seen because of sinus infections. And you can do root canals with a cow's gum. It's not going to fix the pain. You right. know, so right. that's what you went through, unfortunately. And again, it's just because the, the limited nature of dental school is that you can't teach somebody everything in four years. You know, it's not possible. And if a dentist is a smart dentist who has, you know, some wherewithal, you're going to take postgraduate courses. But I've got colleagues and I don't want to, you know, speak badly about my colleagues, but I've got colleagues who truly believe that what they learned in school is all they need to know mm -hmm. because they're drilling and they're filling and mm -hmm. they're making money and they don't yep. need to go to courses and they don't need to take right. all this extracurricular stuff. For me, it was fun. You know, I technically, I, you know, not technically, but I get bored. You know, I do things for a while and then I get bored. And I got to learn something else and I go learn that. And I get a fellowship and I learn something else. People joke with me about how many letters I have to through. I mean, I said, all that tells you is I get bored easily. You know, that's all that tells you. But it's a learning thing. You don't learn if you don't grow, if you don't learn. And, you know, it's just, that's an individual thing, you know, and people sometimes get stuck in a little rut and they don't learn anymore and they think they're okay. But I think when you when you think you know it all, that that's a problem, <laughs> you know, because you will never know it all. Yeah, I, I say three more lifetimes. <laughs> if you're as long as you're not dead, you should still be learning and expanding and developing yourself. And same thing with me in chiropractic school. I did not learn everything I need to know in order to get a body well. So I had to continue on with my education and Absolutely. and I still do to this day. Yeah. So the first thing I want to mention is uh, one of my wonderful patients, uh, Dr. Claudia, who's a dentist, and I reached out to her. I needed a new toothbrush, and I said, what's your favorite toothbrush? And then she told me about this one. I had never heard of it. It's called a, let me see how I can get it here. It's called a Kyoui, K-Y-O-U-I, and I'm not marketing or selling this or getting any money by advertising it, but I just happened to love it. I ordered it based on her recommendation. And I'm finding that my teeth feel a lot cleaner. They feel lighter and with li little effort. And I enjoy the feeling my gums get very stimulated. Um, so I do recommend it. I'll put a link to this toothbrush in the description. And um, it's kind of pricey. It's, I think it's $125, but it lasts forever. And you just need to uh, replace the head every three months. And the other thing I wanted to mention was my favorite supplement for teeth. It is called BioDent. It is from Standard Process. You can get this from my website, which I'll put a link to, drcorey.com, shop Standard Process. And BioDent is just an all-around great tooth support, 
just about for any kind of um, tooth issue you might be running into, whether that is tooth pain or um, cavities, or even, even it even helps gums. It actually helps bones also because your teeth and your bones are made of similar materials. And I had um, a young patient once, he was uh, a teenager. Uh, um, he had uh, type one diabetes, very fragile. And one day he developed severe, severe uh, toothache and it was a holiday weekend. He couldn't get any dentists um, to answer his call. And he came to me and said, you know, Dr. Corey, is there anything you could do to help me? I'm like dying here. And I put him on some BioDent and BioDent. And then he came back to me a few days later and he says to me, wow, that pain medication you gave me was fabulous. Um, I was able to sleep when I took it. And I said, I did not give you pain medication. What are you talking about? And he goes, you know, the, the bio, the, the stuff you gave. I said, oh, the BioDent. Okay. Well, that's how he experienced it. And I've had other patients since then tell me how effective it is for them, that it really, really solves a lot of issues. So I use it very frequently. I, I take it, I give it to my dogs. Um, my dogs love it. So um, that's just a little helpful hint for you if you do live in the US and you want some bi biodent. And Dr. Lou, I just wish that you were closer to me. I'm thinking, you know, so Dr. Lou is in Pennsylvania, right? We're in Hatboro, right outside Philadelphia, about 40 okay. minutes north of Philadelphia. So if anybody is watching that's from around there, please don't hesitate. I'll put your contact information sure. in the description. I might have to take a trip out to see you myself. Absolutely. I think. Love to have you. And then for people that are interested in the US, we can't, you know, we can't refer you outside the US, but inside the US for people who want to find a local holistic dentist, um, I use a website called IAOMT.org. Um, it has um, a lot of information about biological and holistic dentistry, and you can get referrals there. Do you have any resources that sure. you want to uh, share? Well, I, I'm a member of IAOMT. Uh, um, that's where I learned all my mercury techniques, and that's where I get. They're a great organization for information. Um, you know, they do all the science. Um, that's their, their motto. They're all about the science. So, you know, when you want to learn about fluoride or mercury or root canals, they have all the information. Um, Dr. Tom McGuire is another one. I think he has, um, he has a website called, what is it? Um, uh, but Tom McGuire, you, you can just, find just, it. uh, just email me afterwards and I'll, yeah, I'll add it to the, I'll uh, add it to I, IABDM is another one, which is the, uh, International Academy of Biologic Dentists. That's Dr. Huggins's group, uh, DAMS, another great group, um, out of New Jersey. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Mercury uh, what's it, Moms, I think it is, Mercury Free Moms or something. There's a lot of them out there. But the, the main ones, you know, they, they all have little, uh, you know, find a dentist thing on their website. So you can put your zip code in and you can find, you know, yes. somebody reasonably close to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my only, I guess, suggestion for people is check websites, um, ask around. Um, you know, there, there, there are unfortunately a lot of people who are using alternative holistic dentistry as a marketing tool and yeah, you have to be I know. careful. I know. Uh, but you'll know as soon as you walk in. But there are some very simple things. When I have patients that say, well, how do I know? How do, how do I find out? There, there are three basic questions. You can make a phone call. You know, if you pick somebody that's local, you think they have a good website, pick up the phone. And the first question is, how do you handle mercury when you remove it? And if they say, what are you talking about? Then you have a problem. They should say, oh, we have a safe protocol. We follow the IOMT website, uh, you know, protocols. You ask them if they use Florida in their practice. Do they or don't they? It's a simple question. And the final one is how do you handle root canals? You know, because the question, <laughs> the question about periodontal disease is an interesting one because, and again, I'll just tell you a quick story. There, there was a, uh, there was a dentist that opened a practice about a mile from me and I drove by one day. I never saw a sign before and it said Dental Wellness Center. That, that was the name of his practice. So me being me, I called the practice up and I said, what makes you a dental wellness center? And the answer from the young lady was, we treat periodontal disease. I said, well, doesn't everybody treat periodontal? Doesn't every, well, we, we know the systemic link between gums and heart disease. I said, well, isn't that pretty much common knowledge in dentistry? And she said, well, you know, that's our, that's why we're a wellness center. But, you know, then my next question was, well, how do you handle mercury? Well, what do you mean? Well, 
you use fluoride? Well, of course we use fluoride. Do you do root canals? Absolutely do root canals. So how much of a wellness center were they outside of treating right. gum disease? So right, right. That, that's, they're, they're the three questions you can very simply ask on a phone call, take you five minutes and you'll know immediately if you've got a true alternative or holistic dentist. Brilliant. I love hey. it. Yeah, because I mean, the same is true. We say this all the time about health food, right? Just because it's in a health food store doesn't mean it's healthy. Exactly. So this, yeah, that the same. You do your due same. diligence, no doubt. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Doc, this was fantastic. It was better than I ever hoped for. This was, <laughs> this was excellent information. I'd and, like to um, applaud you for doing what you do, because that's that's a great service you're providing. And uh, the fact that you're doing it for free makes it even better. <laughs> in my thank opinion. you. Thank you. And I actually have the um, hope and wish and dream that maybe someday I'll get paid for this. I don't yeah, know how, I, but <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't you ought to call that toothbrush company because I'm sure they <laughs> I know would I should have done that beforehand. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, and folks that, that are watching, please like this video if it was helpful for you. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I would love for you to do that. That's my only reward for doing this at this point. And then most importantly, share it with anyone that you know that you think needs to hear this information. And I will see you all soon. Stay healthy.